Anyone who tries to take video games from the console to the movie theater is bound to run into their fair share of criticism. And yet, this doesn't seem to phase director Uva Boll, who has practically made the genre his exclusive domain. Uva, welcome to the show. Hello, Thanks for hello. coming on. Now, there's an online petition calling for you to stop making movies. It has about 193,000 signatures. And you said if it hits a million, you're going to quit the business. Is, are you serious? Absolutely, but I will never make it. The reality is, first of all, I tracked down who is signing that petition. All the hecklers, all the critics, all the geeks are um, wannabe filmmakers, and as soon as they do something on their own, it sucks. Nerds and jealous wannabe filmmakers are signing that competition. And I was able to track a movie down what they actually did. And here we are. It looks like they shot it in the public toilet in the school. This is this kind of quality the people are doing and they have like let's say under the nicknames in the internet the balls to, to criticize my movies. Like your fuckers writing about my movies constantly lies. They think Elektra is better as Blood Rain or Catwoman. They are retards. They have no idea. And if you go now on IMDb and you see that this movie is getting more points on IMDb, this is a bad sign for that IMDb voting system. Totally absurd reviews where you feel that guy only wants to bash me. I bash them back. Okay, when, if you want to destroy me, let's meet in the boxing ring. So I wrote like, okay, if you come up here and uh, you fight me, then uh, I will kick the shit out of you. <laughs> Are you ready? Saturday, September 23rd, 8 p.m. at the Plaza of Nations in Vancouver, British Columbia. Legendary German director Uwe Boll will be putting on his gloves and stepping into the ring. He's challenged critics worldwide to stop grumbling and start rumbling. Look guys, if you riot, you want to kick me in the balls and you want to hit me and you want to kill me, let's do it in a sportive way. Let's go in the ring and let's do a boxing match. Uwe Boll, let me tell you this. We saw the footage and the world said about me and Uncle Bill over here. And we accept your challenge, baby. You cross the line, baby. And we're going to kick some German ass. So I said, look, if you want to do it and uh, come up to Vancouver, I fly you up, actually. Yeah. But it will be a real boxing fight because yeah. I hate you. Uwe Boll is the worst director alive, and I'm going to beat his ass. Hola, soy Carlos Palencia, y voy a meterle una hostia a Uwe Boll. Uwe Boll, te vamos a machacarlo, ¿sabes? ¿Qué vas a hacer para devolverle estos a Uwe Boll? Pues probablemente, si veo que me está machacando, me liaría patadas. Ya tengo, tengo varios trucos pensados. Me van a enseñar Kung Fu, Judo... Incluso han propuesto por una web que aprenda el Hadouken de Ryu. No sé si será posible. Pero vamos, yo me voy a esforzar al máximo para al menos propinarle una hostia que no olvide. Uwe Boll's first fight was against a Spanish film critic known as Oso. Here you can see Oso training for the fight as well as talking some smack. It's clear that Oso saw the whole thing as a big joke, but what he failed to realize is that Uwe Boll took the fight very, very seriously. Boll spent three months training with a professional coach, three months of building up his stamina, physique, speed, and strength. Therefore, the 41-year-old was more than ready to take on his critics. During the match, Oso was defenseless against the German director who managed to tire him out by the first round. Throughout the rest of the fight, Oso cowered around the ring, avoiding Bull's punches and hardly throwing any of his own. The fight was a one-sided affair. Some speculated that Bull's decade-long amateur boxing experience gave him an unfair advantage. Similar accusations would be raised after subsequent fights. After Bull defeated Oso, he took the mic and announced to the world, contrary to what those stupid, weak critics say, I have now proven that my movies are fantastic. Whether Bull was joking or not remains unknown. <laughs> uh, uh. Soon, the next four contenders were announced and flown to Vancouver, Canada for the event. These men were Lotax, the webmaster and CEO of SomethingAwful.com, Jeff Schneider, a film critic for Ain't It Cool News, Chris Alexander, writer for horror magazine Rue Morgue, and Chance Minter, a 17-year-old who arrived to the event with his supportive mother. He also had six months of boxing training, which made him Bull's most formidable opponent for the night.
Although the requirements for the event were limited to challengers who were Bull's worst critics, those requirements weren't kept. Schneider and Minter hadn't reviewed or even seen any of Bull's films. Additionally, Lotex only wrote his review after receiving his invitation. Similar to Oso, Lotex took the event about as seriously as Chuck E. Cheese. I did not come to kick ass, I came here for the free trip to Vancouver. No, I haven't seen any of his movies, but I heard that they're um, pretty, uh, they're not good. Can we not call him Dr. Bull? Because that makes him sound too professional, and I really take offense to that. For their fight, Lotax could be seen waving tiny American flags around and accusing the Canadian crowd of harboring a known terrorist. By terrorist, he meant Uwe Boll, who still lives in Vancouver to this day. Lotax began the fight by mocking Boll with exaggerated footwork. In response, the director let him dance around for about 15 seconds before dealing a swift punch to the side of the web developer's head. With that, Lotex went down. Once he was back up, Bull hit him again with a left to the body and a wallop to the head, sending Lotex back down to the ground once more. Bull's punches caught Lotex off guard, so off guard that the webmaster forgot that he was in a boxing ring. After taking a punch, Lotex sounded surprised. You hit me in the face! After that, Lotex attempted to avoid the director and prolong the fight, but Bull caught him with three more blows. Lotax's knees buckled and he faltered down to the mat. Then the ref counted to 10 and with that, the match was over, only lasting about two minutes in total. During his post-fight interview, Lotex had this to say. I had no opinion about him. You know, I never really wrote anything negative about him and sometimes I actually defended him. These people talk about how much he sucks. I said, listen, they're just video game movies, who cares? But then they just came out wailing on my head. Now I really don't like the guy. You know, before I was ambivalent. Now I dislike him very much. You might say, I hate him. And now I will side with the people on the internet who do not like him. Have you done any boxing before? Never. Never before, never been in a ring. The characters are poorly written. He has no eye for detail. Like I said, I haven't really seen a full movie, but I don't really think that I need to have even seen a full movie to judge it. Next up was Jeff Schneider, who worked for Ain't It Cool News. He was there acting as a stand-in for Harry Knowles, the website CEO, a man who Bull particularly hated. But Harry didn't attend the event, due to him not meeting the agreed upon weight limit. So Schneider took his place even though he had never reviewed or had even ever seen a single Uwe Boll film. Schneider told Wired.com that, I'm the highest profile target, so I hope he goes easy on me. I consider myself fairly good looking and I don't want to ruin that. During the first round, Schneider took some hits, but otherwise managed to hold his own against the German director. But by the second round, Bull unleashed a quick one-two that took the critic down. Schneider could later be seen breathing through an oxygen mask and periodically vomiting onto the street. Uh, the ER, the paramedics had to come and hook him up to an oxygen machine, and he had to be taken to the hospital. He's one of the most prolific filmmakers out there. Yes, he's shit, but he's prolific. Well, his movies are bad, they're terrible, they're awful, they're hypnotically bad, but they're so bad on such a gigantic, huge operatic scale. The third fighter was Chris Alexander. Unlike the previous two competitors, Chris actually trained for the fight. Even though he thought it was all just a PR stunt, Chris decided to prepare himself for anything. Quote, I knew Bull was a bit nuts and that he actually boxed back in Germany. So I trained, I hired a boxing coach and did a ridiculous amount of cardio. However, Chris didn't take the event as seriously as this quote might suggest. He arrived wearing bat wings, a set of plastic fangs, a scarf, a smoking jacket, and a wrestling mask. Before his match, he took the mic and performed a parody of Muhammad Ali's famous mantra. We're gonna play in the bank for House of the Bank. We're gonna feed him to the sharks for a load in the dark. He's gonna be feeling pain for making blood rain. Chris Alexander's training helped him fare much better than the previous two fighters. Unlike them, he managed to land a few punches and even block some of the director's blows. During the first round, it seemed like he had a winning shot, but then he did something to piss Uwe Boll off. After the round ended, he went to his corner and took a sip from his water bottle, which was full of fake blood. Then the bell rang and Chris waited for Boll to hit him. Once he did, Chris spat the fake blood at him and as soon as Boll found out that Chris was mocking him, he went into a rage. The director put an end to the match by landing a few shots onto the critic's skull. Before exiting the ring, Chris gave the crowd a final theatrical bow. Think about, about Dr. Bull's work. 
Um, most of his movies suck. The final fight was against Chance Minter, a 17-year-old who wasn't even a critic. Minter's status as a minor worried the event's sponsors at GoldenPalace.com, worried about the bad press that could potentially come with a 41-year-old man beating up a 17-year-old. They desperately tried to talk the young boxer out of the fight. But Minter wasn't worried about his safety. He told press, quote, Bull's really wild, more of a brawler than a fighter. His jab is weak, and he tries to get close so he can swing wide. I'm just gonna go out there and do my thing. During the first match, Minter's mother stood in his corner, cheering him on. Although Minter's form and technique was a step above any of the previous fighters, he was still no match for the German director. It was the last fight of the evening, and Bull seemed like he wanted to end it fast. Minter spent most of the first round on the defensive, while Bull pummeled him like he was out for blood. Although none spilled, Bull launched a vicious body shot in the second round that left Minter winded and wobbly. And with that, the ref declared Bull the winner by technical knockout. Then Minter and Bull did something unexpected. They hugged it out. Bull triumphantly grabbed the mic and told the crowd this. Thank you that you all came here to support the contenders or me. And uh, uh, the lesson was so bad to hear like critics are in the ring. They're also writing the fucking critics. Yeah. Thank you. Minter also took the mic and praised his 41-year-old opponent. Quote, He's a great guy who makes great movies, and all the people who say they hate him don't know what they're talking about. Chance Minter later applied for an internship with Bull's crew on the director's upcoming movie, Postal. He even apologized for his harsh criticism, saying Bull's movies weren't as bad as he claimed. To this, Bull later told press, quote, I hit them so hard, they have brain damage, so they love my movies now. Chris Alexander told press that, Nothing will sway my opinion about House of the Dead, Alone in the Dark, and Blood Rain. Nothing. But I knew I would develop some kind of sick, twisted admiration for the guy. Bull makes movies his way without the aid of the studio system. Of course, he's yet to make anything decent, but I'm rooting for the crazy son of a bitch. A decade later, Chris Alexander wrote an article covering what he remembers from the event. He states that, Bull invited me to his beach house the next day, and I was astonished to learn that he was incredibly intelligent and knew virtually everything about cinema history. We became friends, and I'd like to think that we still are. However, Uwe Boll didn't grow on Jeff Schneider or Lotex like he did with Minter and Alexander. After the fight, Schneider told press, quote, I think he's a jerk. This might be PR, but I didn't want to keep getting punched in the head. And me being naive, you know, I thought it was just going to be a PR stunt. Oh, you, know, you thought I, the fight was just going to be like a PR stunt, like a comedy funny stunt. Board, and he, he starts hitting me in the head. Yeah. And I'm kind of confused. <laughs> if, uh, I'm, I'm thinking, okay, well, what's this guy doing hitting me in a boxing match? <laughs> The webmaster also noted that Bull promised them training and boxing equipment before the match, but they didn't receive anything of the sort. He told press that three of the guys didn't even have cups to protect their balls. The only reason I had a cup was because my wife brought me one. Lotex also mentioned that there was a critic who was also an experienced boxer, and he had been interested in taking Bull on. But the director refused the challenge. Lotex assumed that Bull, quote, only wanted people with no boxing experience. I think the funny thing is that Lotex and Jeff Schneider, the guy from AindedCool.com, they showed both what retards they are, actually, because everybody knows from that application since January. And I've wrote, these are real boxing fights, get prepared. And they had three, three months to prepare themselves, yeah. Sean Baby, I think, yeah. uh, volunteered, but Sean Baby has actual training in martial arts. So oh, so they picked help. you because you have no experience boxing. Yeah. yeah. So Oh my god, and, that sucks. And, and this guy, Hart, Bull, is like an amateur boxer. Yeah, they didn't tell me that. <laughs> so they flew you out there just to kick your ass? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sucks. This is like an even more unfair advantage. I've never sparred in my life, and you're doing it right now. You had a long time to, to train. Oh. You had a long time to train. Yeah, you but now you're not pushing out. You have one advantage. Everybody else was pushing out, and you do it. So the thing. So How's go, that an advantage? Go Your mouth out isn't going to get punched. Go so you go it for it. it. Try, you had to try to Get away from my fighter. Get away from my fighter. Oh, Come on. I really don't like you. By 2015, Uwe Boll quit making movies, announcing his retirement through this now infamous video. And uh, basically my message is, fuck yourself. Because that is so fucking absurd what retarded 
amateur idiots collecting money on that absurd website, you know? It looks like nobody gives a shit about Rampage 3, so maybe I shouldn't do it then. I have enough go uh, money to play golf till I'm dead. Now, Uwe Boll runs a restaurant, otherwise he has a podcast where he broadcasts his raw and unfiltered opinions to the world. So, here's Uwe Boll, ready for podcast number two. We start with the first segment and that is about some overrated directors who are basically completely idiotic. One of the most overrated, idiotic, shitty directors ever is Terrence Malick. What the fuck is wrong with you? Your movies are an insult and uh, I think also all the reviewers who still write you any good review are out of the fucking minds. Two options, you start making movies again, uh, like movies with a story and dialogue and stuff like this, uh, or you're just an absolutely a retard. Who should stop making movies and whose industry should stop that you make Movies. Well, advertising break, shop on overballraw.com and uh, get a hoodie. Overballraw, I want to see you with the hoodie. And with that, see you next time and stay tuned for more weird stories. Bye bye now. That's all you need to know now. もう目はドキドキ膝はガクガクえい行くっけない OK! Okay.